Hi folks, this is Bill with Bridging Borders. Thanks for coming along today. Well, we're still on our journey from Mexico back to Canada, and today's video is going to be a bit of a mixed bag. We're going to start off with a beautiful two-day trip starting in Gardnerville, Nevada, which is on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada mountain range, uh, just to the east of Lake Tahoe. We'll stay overnight in Alturas, California, and then tomorrow we'll end up in Bend, Oregon. And once we're in Bend, I'm going to rant about a guy who called me a fraud, called our motorhome a fraud, and me too. I guess we're in this together. Well, just stay tuned and help me through it, okay? Well, you can see what kind of a day we were gifted with as we pulled out of this casino parking lot at the south end of Gardnerville on the 395. It was a great place to stay the night. Quiet, safe. The sun's out. We're topped up with fuel. We're on 395 heading north. What could be better? So just sit back, put up your feet, and how about we'll meet up with you again in Alturas. Through the fields of our pots, feelings out our ways, keeping us close but it's strange now. Dreams holding us closer. Meadows of our youth, a hundred and seven days. Through calling it backwards, our dreams holding us closer. Good morning. Very well, thank you. You too? Any fruit or produce on board? I have to talk to my cook. Alright. Uh, we have a couple of mandarins and a couple of limes and a banana. A couple of mandarins, a couple of limes. I'm sorry? A couple of mandarins and a couple of limes. Store bought? A store bought, yes. Store bought. Yeah. Okay, how about firewood? No firewood, no, no, no. Live plants. Nope. No, no plants. Wild animals. <laughs> we have two cats, but they're oh, not well. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Pretty yeah. easy, huh? Yeah. Easier than the Canadian border crossing, huh? <laughs> yeah, we we don't like journey. them up there. All right, <laughs> Thank cheers. you. We'll you bet. Bye bye. <laughs> yeah, so sense of humor. Well, at this point in the trip, we had a decision to make. We were trying to avoid all decisions, and we were especially trying to avoid the I-5. But we were approaching Susanville, and we knew Susanville is a really cool hub for either accessing the I-5 or taking another route to the east. From Susanville, you can 
go through Redding to the I-5. You can go up through Mount Shasta to the I-5. But we really didn't want to go that way. So alternatively, we could go towards Alturas and up towards Bend. Just keep following the 395. And that's what we elected to do. But this route was unknown to us. So we're always a little apprehensive with a rig uh, on a road that we're not familiar with. Michaela made the call at the last moment. Let's just do it. She always makes good decisions. Actually, Monty listens to her more than me anyway, so he just naturally turned that way. You know, Canada's got its own flat prairie where you could watch your dog run away from home for about a week. But this was really barren. We had a really pleasant night's stay at Sully's RV Park. Karen, the manager, was just a gem. We'll make a point of stopping by here on our way south next year. We loved it here. Oh, it was fantastic. You we were going to come and say goodbye, but we didn't see your car, so we thought you weren't here. It was fantastic. We want, we'll come again. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Can we ask a question? We're going to go, we're going to Bend. Okay. And we were going to go to Klamath Falls, but other people speak about going due north on the 31 or whatever? 395 Three, up to or Lakeview, and then... Which would you do in this thing? Me, yep. I would do Lakeview, because Lakeview is a nice, steady road to climb. I mean, you got a hill, but you can't normally realize you're climbing a hill. And that's 395? Yeah, that's going up towards Lakeview. Yeah. And then you go...
At this point, we found ourselves heading east, away from Bend, towards Redmond. No, not because we were lost, but it was the direction of our um, RV park for the night, which was at the exhibition grounds. So we're actually going to be about 20 to 30 minutes outside of Bend. Bend is one of our favorite places on earth. It's got natural beauty, it's got old and new parts to the town, and best of all, it's got terrific brew pubs. And it's the birthplace of the Beaver Motor Coach Corporation, and Monty, our motorhome that you've been traveling with all this while, is a 1990s era motorhome built in Beaver's heyday. I don't even know what heyday means. Anyway, I gotta tell you about a nasty comment that Monty and I received from a viewer several videos ago. The video titled, Coming in Hot and Heavy, You Stupid Idiot. Well, I guess this guy took the stupid part literally. And yeah, and I asked for it, but really? Well, here's what he wrote. And if you don't mind, I'll read it out loud, just so I can get really pissed off again in my Canadian way. Now, to protect his privacy, and I don't want to embarrass this guy publicly, so I've blocked out his name, but here it goes. Sorry. Seriously doubt your stated specifications on this coach. In the first place, it looks like a gasoline-powered Class A motorhome due to the grill in front. Diesel pushers usually have the radiator in the rear and a smooth front. 50 gallons of LP gas? No way. 100 gallons of diesel? No way. 100 gallons of fresh water? No way. Not in a 30-footer. Sorry, unbelievable. Our 40-foot diesel pusher has a 15-gallon propane tank, etc., 40-gallon black water, 40-gallon gray water. Please get real. I think it's perfectly reasonable to question these kind of capacities in a 30-foot motor coach. I'd think the same, too, if I didn't know the Beaver motor coach. But do you have to be so friggin' nasty about it? And now I'm questioning my own sanity, and I'm a sensitive guy. Do I not know what I'm driving? Am I driving a gas motorhome instead of a diesel pusher? A gas diesel, a gas... I don't know. Now, what better place to defend Monty than in Bend, where Monty was built? Okay, now I'm calming down. Let's relax. And in fairness to this guy, I was out a little bit on the specs. I did state 50 gallons for propane. It's actually 35. And I said 100 gallons of fuel, and it's actually 90. But everything else is the same, and those two things don't change the significance of what he was saying. Brrr. The post did come down after a while. I don't know. I didn't pull it down. I don't know where it went, but it did disappear. And his comment does begin with sorry, and it ends with please get real. So I think this guy may be part Canadian. You know, what this whole episode has done is highlighted how unusual the 30-foot beaver motorhome really is. And perhaps it's time to do a separate video about this mighty road warrior. Thanks for putting up with me. I hope you'll subscribe and stay with me.